Welcome back to PLS 510. Today we're going to take up the topic of forage anti-quality factors and disorders. The first two that we will take up are nitrate toxicity and prussic acid poisoning. But first I'd like to tie this lecture back to the annual, the summer annual grass lecture that precedes it by pointing you to this table, which happens to be uh, in the latter part uh, at the end of our publication, AGR 229, the overview publication on warm season annual grasses for Kentucky. This is a table of characteristics of our commonly used summer annual grasses. You'll notice the species on the left hand side from crabgrass all the way down to Sudan grass and the characteristics along the top. Now of course today we're going to focus a lot on nitrate toxicity potential and the prussic acid uh, potential. But you can also see some of the other characteristics such as suitability, excuse me, suitability for silage or hay or grazing for all of these species. So let's move on. The, there are several forage disorders that are due to anti-quality factors and we're going to list a few here. The ones we will take up today are the top four, nitrate toxicity, cyanide poisoning, bloat, and grass tetany. In a later lecture, we will look at botulism and listeriosis. I want to start right out with this table, or this pair of tables, uh, comparing nitrate toxicity on the left and cyanide poisoning on the right because these two are often confused and we'll talk about that or in comparison quite a bit here in the next few minutes. As I said, they're often confused and let's look at why. Nitrate is highest in the lower stems. Cyanide, on the other hand, is highest in the leaves and the young tissue. Nitrate is lowest in leaves and seed. Cyanide is lowest in the stem, so it's exactly backwards. Nitrate is not metabolized by the drying of hay. Think of it as salt. Uh, and if you take up salt uh, into a fresh green leaf and then dry that leaf, it doesn't get less salty. It will, it will if you're tasting it, it's going to appear more salty. So that nitrate remains and the water leaves. In the case of cyanide, cyanide, after hay cutting, dissipates as a gas. So the drier the hay, the, the lower the cyanide. And similarly for the two, ensiling reduces the toxicity significantly for both nitrate and cyanide. So let's look at nitrate accumulation and toxicity just a little closer. In order to get nitrate toxicity, we have to have a combination of things. Number one, we need to have high nitrogen rates and we need adverse conditions that prevent the plant from metabolizing the nitrates that it brings up through the roots and uh, into protein. The things that will cause, what are those adverse conditions? They could be drought or a sudden change in the weather. Since we're talking about summer annuals here, usually it's changing from uh, very uh, warm and clear to cloudy and cool and all of a sudden the, the growth stops so the growth is, not very, growth is not very fast and nitrates are not metabolized. So in those cases nitrate will accumulate in the lower stalks and stems. And again leaves and seed are low, nitrate persists in hay and metabolized in silage. Nitrate toxicity can occur in all animals, but ruminants are much more sensitive, and here's why. The nitrate that's present in plants, once it gets to the rumen, it's converted to nitrite. That nitrite will bind with hemoglobin to make methemoglobin or metallohemoglobin. And what that really is, is the, the iron molecule that's in the middle of every hemoglobin molecule that is able to transport oxygen, that iron molecule is in the plus two or ferrous state, if you can think back to your inorganic chemistry. When nitrite binds with hemoglobin to make methemoglobin, it flips that nitrogen 
to plus three state or the ferric state, and in this state, it cannot transport oxygen, and so animals die of asphyxiation, and rather quickly too. Horses are, can be affected, as can most monogastrics, but the thresholds are not clear. Our most common nitrate sources are drought-stressed corn or sorghum species, but I don't want you to ever forget about Johnson grass because it can be a source of both nitrates and prussic acid. Brassicas can also be a source, as can the weeds, ragweed, pigweed, thistle, and dock. You will also notice and be relieved that uh, these are weeds that livestock don't readily consume. Nitrates can also enter the, the uh, diet of a ruminant through the water sources uh, through contaminated, contam contaminated wells. I wanted to include this table mainly for, well, for a couple of reasons. First of all, if you need to, to find a reference for toxicity and you have a test for nitrate, you can look at the table at the top of this page. And this table is found in your po uh, pocket guide, as in as also it's also found in Southern Forages. Uh, in our case, we also reproduced the table in ID 217 on nitrate poisoning. But you may be called upon to convert different forms of nitrogen, such as the nitrate uh, nitrogen here in the second row of the bottom table to uh, to uh, to nitrate, just plain nitrate, in that case you would multiply by 4.4. And so that table is useful. You need to know where it is and know that you may be called on uh, when you're practicing to be able to interconvert forms of nitrate. I'd like to switch gears now to prussic acid poisoning. Prussic acid is cyanide, HCN or hydrogen cyanide. It gets its name because cyanide was isolated from a dye called Prussian blue, hence prussic acid. Sorghums contain durin, which are cyanogenic, not glucosides, but glycosides within the epidermal cells of the leaf, and this significance will uh, become clear in just a moment. Enzymes that are responsible for hydrolyzing durin into both into two parts, the sugar part and the cyanide part, are found within the mesophyll cells of the leaf. So an ordinary intact leaf has the potential to make prussic acid, but it is not uh, going to do so as long as it is intact. When we chew those leaves or masticate them, it brings the enzymes into contact with durin and it releases cyanide. Like uh, nitrate poisoning, rumen, the rumen environment can make this worse. It, all, it does this by uh, acting directly on the durin to also release cyanide. So we can get cyanide from the chewed up tissue, but whatever might not have been mixed and start to evolve cyanide whenever it's chewed up, when it gets to the rumen, it can be further, uh, durin can be further acted on to release cyanide. Cyanide inhibits cytochrome C oxidase within the electron transport chain of the mitochondria and causes death by asphyxiation very quickly. Let's take a look at some species that are, we're going to uh, be careful with or look to uh, to avoid or prevent cyanide toxicity. We've mentioned the forage sorghums, and that's sorghum, sorghum sudans, and sudan grasses, as well as uh, the per, their perennial cousin, Johnson grass. Wild cherry leaves are also a potential. Indian grass might not be on your list, but if you think back to the scientific name for Indian grass, that was Sorgastrum nutans. So it has prussic acid potential. And white clover, really white clover. This uh, became uh, brought home to me during the mare reproductive loss syndrome when we were trying to figure out what is it in the environment that's insulting those pregnant mares and causing them to abort. Uh, and if you start taking a look at all the toxic plants that might be 
in horse pasture, you've got to to ask, uh, or you got to. That's e well, you can easily find that white clover is known to uh, certain varieties and certain types are known to have a fair amount, not a not as much as some other plants, but a fair amount of uh, uh, prussic acid potential. And as we stated earlier, uh, horses may be sensitive to prussic acid, but the thresholds are not very clear. In fact, we did wind up uh, doing some experiments dosing uh, horses with uh, cyanide. And uh, it caused them to be uncomfortable, it caused them to sweat, and it caused them to do a lot of things, but it didn't cause them to abort. I wanted to include this to show you visually that separation of durin and the, uh, the, the uh, enzymes that will hydrolyze it. So epi the epidermis, so that outside layer of cells, contain durin. The mesophyll, or the cells in the middle of the leaf, contain durinase and alpha hydroxynitrolase that are enzymes that will hydrolyze durin, and that is it'll split it into the cyanide and to the uh, plus the sugar part. How can we prevent cyanide toxicity? Don't graze sorghums when, until they reach 18 to 24 inches tall. Remember, it's the young leaves and the young green tissue that are highest in prussic acid potential. And of course, plant something else. Pearl millet is a uh, similar in growth habit to the sorghum sudans and sudan grasses, but has absolutely no prussic acid potential. And for that reason, a lot of producers will choose to plant pearl millet instead of the sorghums. Nitrogen makes it worse, so use moderate amounts of N. Uh, and by moderate, uh, I would say that we would use 60 pounds of N in advance of any growth uh, cycle. The way that we manage these uh, sor tall growing sorghum sudans and sudan grasses and pearl millet is to apply some nitrogen after we graze or towards the end of a grazing cycle so, and then pull the animals off and let it uh, come back. Uh, and typically we use about 60 pounds of N per cycle uh, every time we want to get regrowth. And if we don't want regrowth, we stop adding, stop adding in. Another thing that you want to have on your list uh, to, in order to prevent uh, cyanide toxicity is to not graze cyanogenic plants when frost is likely. Uh, and every year this question comes up and the only correct answer, the only safe answer, is if you expect temperatures to be uh, at or below freezing and you have cattle on Sudan grass or Johnson grass, they need to come off. After the plant has been frosted and killed back to the ground, uh, typically about two weeks, then it's safe to turn back in. Please watch the young tissues that come up from the base because these are going to be uh, very succulent, very attractive that time of year to grazing animals, and they're going to be very high uh, in cyanide potential. And last, of course, watch for fallen limbs of cherry trees after storms. And while we said before that white clover, academically speaking, can have some cyanide uh, potential, it is not uh, of a practical concern for grazing animals. All right, this brings us to a close of this uh, short segment on nitrate toxicity and prussic acid poisoning. Until next time, we will see you then. <laughs>